Today I'm going to be sharing with you my free crochet spring flowers. Hi, I'm Rosanna from Moira Crochet and today I am going to be doing a roundup of all my free crochet flower patterns and today it's going to be the spring collection. All of these patterns are free and can be easily accessed from my website. I'll put a link down below and I will go through step by step all of the free crochet patterns that I have available. So let's get started. The first crochet flower pattern I want to share with you is my crochet bluebell. Now this was the second free crochet flower pattern that I made and this was made during a time during the pandemic when I was releasing one free crochet flower pattern every week. And since then, my collection has grown. Now, my website, you can find, I believe, over 24 free crochet flowers. So this was one of the second that I made. And this flower was inspired from the forests in England. Now, if you go into the forest in spring in England, you will sometimes find these tiny, tiny little bluebell flowers which carpet the forest floor and this is not something you can see very often in the city unless you find somebody who happens to have a cottage garden and you will be able to sometimes find these gorgeous flowers. So I turned this little iconic flower into a crochet pattern and for this free crochet pattern you will also get the flowers and the leaves. The flowers are made in individual motifs and they are made in the round and the leaves are made with a turning technique. So if you would like to make my crochet bluebells, I'm going to leave a link down below to the full written photo tutorial and from there you can also access the step-by-step -step YouTube video. So I'm going to throw in a video now of this little flower close-up. The second flower we have in my spring roundup is the crochet pansy. And this is a little tiny bouquet that I made and I've used the smallest, tiniest crochet hook possible. Um, but you can use any crochet hook you want for all of these flowers as long as it matches your yarn. You want a crochet hook which create tighter stitches because you want your flowers and your petals to stay stiff. So this is my crochet pansy and I'm going to show you a bigger version because it's quite difficult to see because she's so small. Here she is and this crochet pansy is actually made of two motifs which are sewn together and the, the photo tutorial will show you step by step how you can make both the flower and the matching leaves. Like I said, I'll leave a link down below and I'll show you a video now. The third flower is the teeny tiny daisy. Now I have a lot of fond memories of daisies from when I was in school and we used to sit on the school field, all the girls together, and we would actually collect lots of daisies. And what we would actually do is we would break off the head from the stem and then turn the stem upside down and thread it through so it became a daisy umbrella. So it was the opposite way round. But of course, we also made daisy chains and daisy tiaras. So it wasn't long before I had to make my own crochet version. 
And yet again, I have used the smallest crochet hook I could use, which I believe for this one was a 1.25 with some thread. But again, you can use any crochet hook you like. Now, with all these crochet patterns, I also try to push your crochet knowledge to the next level by introducing something more advanced beyond basic level. For example, for this crochet flower, I will show you step by step how you can create your own crochet button. And this is a very satisfying technique. It takes a little while, it will use a lot of thread, but it will create a center to your daisy that is a little bit raised, like a little donut cushion. And there is a link on the pattern for this video. So you can learn how to make a new technique with crochet to increase your, your pocket, your, your skills in crochet by adding new skills to your belt. So I'll throw in a video now. This is the Crochet Daisy. the crochet daffodil, the quintessential spring flower in England. When these flowers show their trumpet forms, we know spring has arrived. So of course I had to make a crochet flower version and this flower was made in memory of my granddad. It was a flower he always liked and the reason he liked it, he always said it was a happy flower. So every time I look at a daffodil or even my crochet flower, I always think of my granddad. So this is a really nice memory to have. Now, like I said, all the flowers will add a new technique. And the technique on this one is a front post double crochet. And this will create the trumpet 3D form of your crochet flower. So... Like I said, there is a link down below for you to make your own crochet daffodil. The next in the lineup is one of the most delicate flowers from the spring garden and it is a ranunculus flower and I love these flower with their enveloping floral petals which go on and on with a tiny little center. It also reminds me of a little bit of a peony. So this is made in a ribbon style to create your pattern so you will create a long long crochet ribbon with various little shell motifs all in um, decreasing or increasing size, I can't remember off the top of my head, and you will wrap this around to make your flower. And this is a flower which is made with motifs. There are three separate sections to this flower. So you've got the sepals, the petals, and also the stamen in the center. And so this is the crochet ranunculus. The next flower I'm going to share with you is one of the most colorful flowers you find in spring, which are anemones, and you can get them in all sorts of colors. I especially love it when you can find purple and red anemones. So for this pattern, this is made in motifs. The petals are individually made and then sewn together. And there is a new technique which is used in the center in which you use both the front loop and the back loop 
to create your crochet anemones. And these look really, really beautiful as a collection, as a bouquet. And I had a bouquet of these on my kitchen table when I first made this pattern a few years ago, and it just brought joy to the room. So as I said, the link is down below for you. And the final pattern I want to share with you today, it has actually seen a bit of better day. She's a little bit broken and I am without a glue gun at the moment. But this is my crochet cherry blossom. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. And this pattern reminds me of my hometown. And there are a few weeks between March and April when it is snowing cherry blossoms and it's such a magical time our street will get filled with cherry blossom petals everywhere and the smell was beautiful so this is a pattern which brings a lot of memories and season with me so for this pattern again I'm using different techniques to push you again onto the next level and this is made using both front loop and back loop and there's also peacock stitches in this and for this pattern I don't actually just show you how to do the cherry blossom I also will show you how to do the cherry boss blossom buds I hope you've enjoyed this roundup. The links are all down below for you. If you make any of these flowers, I would love to see your work. You can send me an email via info at moirocrochet.com or tag me on Instagram or Facebook and let's just fill the world with crochet flowers. So I'm going to bring this video to an end and love you and leave you and I will see you in the next video. Bye!